One key to containing an outbreak is contact tracing. The city of Houston has more than 120 people tracing at the moment. They're led by the health department's health authority. Dr. David Purse is with us tonight and leading that effort. Doctor, thank you for joining us. 120 sounds low for a city like Houston. Do you have enough people going out and contact tracing, identifying who's infected and how many people around them that they interacted with might be exposed? Yeah, so we're at about 120 now, but we're growing. We're, it requires training, so we're training classes and groups of 50 at a time. So that number will continue to increase. We're just at 120 at, at right now. And by the time this is all said and done, we're going to need, we believe we're going to need a minimum of around 300. Remember, Houston is a community with a population of around 2.3 million people. So it's a lot of work. Why now is this happening that you're hiring? I mean, Houston, Texas, a lot of these states had months to prepare, unlike New York, when this virus hit. Why weren't some of these efforts underway? Well, we did have contact tracers. We, these 120 are new additional contact tracers on top of the nearly 100 that we already had in place, because these are the ones that are being paid for through the CARES Act money. And once we got that, we were able to start spooling up and uh, getting folks. And so our, our neighbors in Harris County have done the same thing. Uh, they're a little bit ahead of us, but uh, it all had to do with uh, you know, just the timing of getting people, reassigning them. And there are the other diseases continue along as well. And so we've had to balance that in the mix as well. So how successful ha has your team been in identifying cases and, and preventing spread by telling people to, to quarantine? I, essentially, that is what this is about. I remember reading in the outset of this crisis about South Korea, and they were able to trace you know, hundreds of cases to one person at a nightclub. Are you effectively doing this? So it's different for here in the United States. They had some tools with in South Korea that we don't have, or we don't have as sophisticated as they had in South Korea. So one of the problems that we have here in the United States, and people need to understand, is when somebody gets tested and they test positive, that becomes a case. We then have to do that case investigation and talk to that person and find out, you know, where they've been and who they've been with and try to find out where they think they may have gotten infected and where who they may have infected since then. Well, in order for that to happen, we have to be able to get in touch with that person. So before COVID, when a test was sent off for a communicable uh, illness, like say measles or something on those lines, there was a doctor's office involved that gave a lot of information. And then the lab would give us the information as well. But the labs are used to giving us very little information, a name and a phone number perhaps. And we would then go back to the doctor's office, get the rest of the information to find the person. Well, with these open testing centers that we have, there is no doctor's office involved. And so we're limited with the amount of information that's collected at the testing center. But generally there's enough uh, information collected when you go to get tested, but the lab doesn't always report that to us. You compound that with the fact that we've had to ramp up this testing so rapidly, a lot of the labs that used to do something else are now doing this. And so we've had real problems with getting accurate and complete information from the labs. And then in addition, when we call people, a lot of folks don't answer the phone if it's a number that they don't recognize. And so we were having lots and lots of problems with getting in touch with people in order to be able to do the case investigation as well as the contact tracing because of limited information and the fact that people don't answer the phone if it's not a number that they recognize. So, so what has to be done to make this better and more effective? Because ultimately all the medical experts we talk to say this has to happen to contain the spread. Yeah, and, and that's an important thing, it's to contain. So contact tracing, the, the whole gambit, the testing, case investigation and contact tracing, which then is followed with people changing their behavior. We need to talk about that for a quick moment. That all uh, has to happen in order for it uh, this to be uh, successful. So the bottom line is that if we can get a hold of folks and let them know that they were a contact of a known case, they then have to change their behavior, which means they're gonna need a quarantine. So if you're at work and you get a phone call from the health department saying that you've been identified as a close contact, we're going to tell you you need to quarantine yourself at home for 14 days. And that's where the rubber meets the road. Now, that works generally better in a situation where we're dealing with smaller numbers of people because we then have the ability to keep up with these people every day and make sure that they are quarantining themselves. But in a situation like we have now where the city of Houston, we sometimes get 200 new cases in a day. And if there's five to 10 right. or maybe even more contacts per case, the, the, the amount of work to get folks. So the bottom line is we're relying on people to do what we ask them to do because we can't hold their hands like we used to in the old days. Very quickly, David, I, uh, Dr. Purse, I wonder how the restaurants and, and other businesses are affected, affected by this. Do restaurants or, or small business retailers have to shut down 
if you contact them and say they've been exposed? So no, they don't have to shut down. If we contact them and we do the contact tracing, let's say, just to your example, there's a, a employee at a restaurant that tests positive. We'll contact the uh, case. They'll tell us which coworkers they think were meet the definition of close uh, uh, close contacts. We'll contact those individuals. That we then find out they all work together. We'll often go to the employer, let them know what's going on, and we'll work with them because our goal is not to shut down stores or restaurants. Uh, our goal is to allow business to grow because it has to grow. We've got to have some growth in the economy. That's that's for certain. There's consequences of that as well. Uh, but if there is a critical mass of people who can't come to work because they need to be home in quarantine, then the owner may have to consider closing. But it's it's not because we're going to want them to, but they may wind up in that situation, uh, depending on how many people get infected. No, the, the, the restaurant owner can do something in the meantime. They can protect their employees by asking them or telling them or making them wear a mask the whole time that they're at work. So the spread of the virus, so if one employee comes in who's infected and they wear a mask, they are much less likely to spread it to their coworkers. But if you let your employees come to work and not wear masks, you're asking for the rest of your workforce to get infected. 